Your religion is your belief system that you use to make sense of reality. Humanism is a religion. Man is the God. Humanity is the God. Humanity is the highest authority for determining what's real and what's not real and what's true and what's... Um, it's probably like helping other humans, like being, being kind to other humans. Um, it's kind of Christian, really. Uh, no, because, because, well, in humanism, there's no way to define what being kind is. You don't know. You don't have a standard for, well, I'd say, um, love, the love of God, how God defines love. In the Bible, God says that love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, does not boast, keeps no record of wrongs, rejoices with the truth, stuff like that. So the Bible defines what love is, and I think we should do what God says when it comes to love. Are you loving the people that are walking in here today? The Bible is clear. It says, just not yes. By speaking the truth to them, that can change their life, that will save them from a fiery hell. A terrible, tormenting experience that never ends. And by Puritanism, we need love. Oh yeah. Please You're kind of puritanical. Well, we're Christians. You know, we're 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 we're, 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 we're talking about what the Bible says. You know, we're we're speaking the truth of God's word. And out here, we're also being a voice for kids who don't have a voice, who are going to be murdered if if their okay. parents don't turn away from murdering. Right. So, are you guys limited to uh, rights for preborn children? Um, well, there's definitely help that's needed all over the city for I mean, post-born children. What do you do for post-born children? You know, there to offer them help if someone who needs the help. So, like, like, if you were walking down the street and saw a child, you would help them? If I saw a great need, yeah, I would help them. You it, saw what? If I see someone in great need, you know, okay. need I'll, I'll try to help them. But why do you seek out this place instead of... Because it's a place... Because they murder people here. Do you ever <laughs> if, go to the uh, juvenile center on the south side? That'd be cool. Okay, well, what do you do there? Well, I uh, went there a few times and I have watched what they were doing. And, and what did you do? What did I do? What did you watch? What did you observe? What did you see? Well, I, I observed them spending time with the kids, reading the Bible, having activities. What? They don't read the Bible in juvenile prison? What are you talking about? Yeah, they do. They probably do. I, I read, I, I read, I read. You read the Bible with kids in yeah, we look, we look. June. So, so are you saying that you're a humanist? I would say that's accurately. Yeah. Well, accurate about my beliefs. How, how do you know what kind, what being kind is? How do you know what's kind and what's not kind? And why is it good to be kind in your worldview? What do you mean, why is it good to be kind? Right. Why should Why should we be kind to people in your worldview? Why should we not be mean? Why is it why is it wrong to cause pain in other people's consciousness? Okay. You need that, no no it's not it's a very fundamental question that you really need to figure out because I don't think you can answer it according to a humanistic worldview. You need to you need to be able to. Well, no, you need a standard for morality, and you don't have a standard for morality with humanism. People know what morality. No, they don't. It's, it's it's different opinions all over the place. Some people think it's good to rape people. Other people think it's terrible no, no, to rape people. It's good to rape people. Yes, they do. That's why they rape people. Oh my God. You're not very very bad. You're not very smart. I guess. It's no, actually. <laughs> I'm gonna go rape someone because it's good. They know yes, they do. Bad. Yes, they, they do, do ma'am. There Nobody are there are people. Yes, there are people who do think rape is good. People in prison like to rape other people in prison. Yeah, but, Everything you do, you think is good. There's nothing that you've ever done where you knew it was bad, but you did it anyway. Well, obviously, they're, they thought it was better to do it than not do it. That's why they did it, right? No. <laughs> so they think it's a good thing okay. to do, well, <laughs> or they wouldn't have done it. It's a complicated psychological question. Why we do what we do. Uh, the, have you ever heard of the id? Um, I've the heard id. of the reference. Okay, but you don't know what it is. No. Okay. So the id is the selfish part of your brain, I guess. 
Okay, so that's what tells you I do this because I like it. I like to do this. So let's use your example of rain, for example. Someone's id is telling them they want to rape someone, they want to take advantage of someone. That doesn't mean that they also think it's good to rape someone. They do it because they like it, for better or worse. Right, and so they think it's good no, because they, they like it. No, they don't think it's good. They, they, like, according to them, it's what they want to do, right? Right, it's what they want to do. It doesn't mean that they think it's good. They might know that it's bad, but it makes them feel good. Okay. So it makes them feel good, but it doesn't mean that they believe that it is good. Well, they believe that, that them feeling good is the greatest good. It's, no. <laughs> That's why they do it. The greatest good, they're just willing to sacrifice. Well, no, they do, they do believe their greatest, everybody acts according to their greatest desire, okay? Correct. So their that greatest, their greatest desire is to commit the rape. And they okay. think that it's good to no. obey their greatest desire. That's why they no. obeyed their greatest desire. No. And actually, I think you would find that a lot of people feel great shame when they commit crimes like that against others. Yes, people. people do have a sense. So that doesn't mean that they think it's good. They know that it's bad. They've right. done it anyway. Deep. They, they probably know that they are bad people. Deep, deep down, many people understand that what they're doing is bad and Correct. they still do it. Correct. But... If they say it's a good thing to do, who are you to no, say otherwise? How do you know? It's a good thing to do. Well, actually, no. Like, there are there are people who do actually believe that it is good Show to me like. A single person. Show like me. Hitler thought it was good to exterminate Jews, right? He thought that was a good thing to do, right? Yeah, Hitler is not a good example to use if you're trying to use the common man. Well, no. Like, there are a lot of people who do like they have racism in their hearts. They do actually believe that certain people are inferior and it's good, it's a good thing to use them, like like black slavery, you know, like they used black slaves, they thought it was, they thought they were inferior and they thought it was good to use them, right, and abuse them. Do you know any black people? Oh yeah. Yeah, I do know black people. Why are you asking me that? But like. Just because you seem like the type of person who doesn't. So, so. How do you know what is right or wrong in your worldview? Why is why are you saying that we should make people feel good and like help them out or whatever that means? Like why should we help people instead of hurt people? Like like in my worldview, everybody does know deep down like what is right and what is wrong at a basic level and they still commit sin against God. But in your worldview, how do you know what's right or what's wrong? You know, like how do you know that, like why why is it why is it good to make somebody feel happy and like cause pleasure in their consciousness? Why should that happen? That's what you're saying should happen. I'm asking you why. I just don't think you should do anything that's hurting anybody. Why? Why should we avoid pain? Why should pain be something that you don't want to cause in other people? Why, why is pain bad in your worldview as a humanist? What does it have to do with my, I mean, why are you bringing my worldview into something so simple? Because your worldview is very important. You know, it's how you make sense of reality. It's how you live your life. You live your life according to your worldview. So you're saying that we should help people. We should help them avoid pain. And I'm saying, why? Why shouldn't we hurt people instead? I am a philosopher. Oh. Where can I read your works? <laughs> I haven't written anything official. <laughs> but I have, a, I have a YouTube channel where I debate people on philosophy. Channel. Of course you have a YouTube channel. Yeah. Am I going to be on your YouTube channel? Maybe. Probably. <clears throat> but you need to answer that question. How do you know, like, what's right or what's wrong? Why is it wrong to cause pain in other people's consciousness? If that's what you believe, you'd be correct, you know? Yeah. Some, some cultures, different cultures believe, you have another culture that may believe it's, it's good to murder people. No, there is yeah. no culture that thinks it's good. Well, how do you know? Well, I, I think, like, people, everybody at a basic level knows it's wrong to murder people, but they've suppressed the truth so much. Well, I, yeah. I'm familiar Why with the Symbionese people. Yeah. Would you no, like I mean, that, that, that's made news that they will 
they have made it known that they don't want people to come to their island Correct. and they will yeah, shoot you. you, go you go right. Like, right. It doesn't mean they think it's good to murder people. I think they do. <laughs> they, they, like they've deep down, they have the knowledge. Like God, the, God's word says that God wrote the work of the law on our hearts. So that's why we all deep down know that it's wrong to hurt people. Well, but that people suppress that to such an extent that they. How do you guys know each other? Um, we're we work we're Christians that work together. Um, we got connected to fight abortion. On the internet. Uh, probably yeah. I mean, I met I met Nicholas in Oklahoma. Okay. Yeah, I'm Matt. I'm Matt. I'm Matt. Matt. My name is Matt. Matt, nice to meet you. So you, you did meet on the internet? Um, I don't remember exactly how we met. <clears throat> really? You don't know how you met each other? We got a, we got we got in contact in one way or another. You know, we're, we are connected on the internet. But you need to come to grips with your absurd worldview, your humanistic worldview. You know that my worldview is absurd. Because you can't explain why you should prevent people from having pain in their consciousness. Do, do, do you know what will happen if, if what would happen if you died today? Do you have any idea what would happen? Nope, I don't. Do you ever think about that? Do you have any serious thought? I focus my day to day on doing what I can to help other people. Why? Because it makes me feel good. It's kind of selfish, actually. It makes you feel good? Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, what is your purpose in this life? I mean, are you... To help people. But, but for what reason? <laughs> no reason. To cause certain uh, feelings in their consciousness that you... I don't know think, what they feel like. Like pleasure? Them? I well, don't know. No, probably not, because I only see people really at the worst So what is the definition of helping people? Like, like, um, why should you I, help okay. people? Why? Why should I help them? I, like, what? You don't feel like. Feel good because I okay, because like it. it gives you pleasure. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, do you believe that, there, that there's a heaven or hell? I don't know. So, so if another person gets pleasure from raping another person, would it be? Why wouldn't it be okay for them to do that? Because it, that's that gives them that gives them pleasure, right? You do what you want to give you ple yourself pleasure, you know. Right, but it's not at the cost of another person's uh, pain. Why does that matter? Why should pain yeah, not happen? Me. I don't know. Cops shooting you, you just, it's just your preference that it not happen? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So morality doesn't actually exist in your worldview. It's just your arbitrary no, opinion. No, that's not true. It's just your desire that it not happen, but it's not actually objectively wrong that it happens. It's not something that we should, that's always wrong. It's just your preference, right? <laughs> In, the, in your humanistic worldview, there is no morality. It's just arbitrary opinions and preferences. Sure, that's what you want to say. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty absurd worldview. Okay. Because like, then, like, then rape isn't wrong. <laughs> well, so you, it's just preference. You like to jump to conclusions. You wanted to say something? I'm just asking, what's... Everyone should ask themselves this question. What is the basis for your morality? What's the basis that, like, okay, I believe... Um, this will happen when I die. I believe that this is good, this is bad. And it's we'll a lot see. They, what, what is our basis for morality? Why is this right? Why is this wrong? Why do you think that when you die, you're going to go here or nothing's going to happen? What's the basis for that? So, this is where we differ. I don't do what I do because I'm trying to get to heaven or avoid going to hell. I do what I do because I think it's better for me. And, what, and what's better for people is an arbitrary opinion, right? Sure, it's my okay. opinion. Yeah. So, it's basically everything's meaningless. You just well, we have to have an objective standard that you can hold to an authority. Not because not our feelings really and our beliefs are not, are not an standard. authority to stand upon. Because our that's actually why we have to have a set of laws and yada yada. Because people probably would. Women weren't allowed to vote. That was considered oh, that's, moral. That's well, right. see, our our that's laws and our, and our beliefs, our feelings, they change all the time. Right? Yes, so morality is not static. So what? That's so what fluid. Is it's different. What? what? It's different. That's, you just made the whole point. Morality is not static. No, no, it's fluid. But, so it's different for different people. No, I'm it's saying good people, to have your own moral code, but you can't enforce it and impose it on others. Why is it, why is it wrong to enforce it and impose it on others? Well, is it just your arbitrary opinion? What was immoral 30 years ago may not be immoral now. <laughs> sure, sure. So yeah, morality changes. Well, and according to your worldview, morality changes. But according to my worldview, it doesn't. It's always It's always been the same. It's God's law. But the morality here in America has changed because we've thrown God's law under the bus. Because we let women vote. Yeah. 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 So
No, there's nothing. There's nothing in God's law that keeps women from. Yeah, God's law doesn't command people to not wear pants. Vote? Yeah, women can vote. Do you think <laughs> women should work outside work the home? Outside the home. <laughs> <laughs> if they want to, they can do that. Oh, well, you don't need both parents working. I mean, they, they should raise their, their children to fear God. Not, not, they shouldn't dump their, their children onto the state to, to, to be the parents. So you think people are dumping their children onto the state? Yes, okay. So what can be done to avoid people dumping their children onto the state? All the demand Homeschooling? Work, and they can leave his wife to stay home and educate their children. Well, here, you guys need to get together and get your collective opinions. He thinks women need to stay in the home. I just said homeschooling. What? Yeah, homeschooling okay, should happen. Let's talk about that for a second. Do you know what the rules and regulations are regarding homeschooling in Illinois? No. No. I was homeschooled in Illinois. Oh my god, that explains so much. <laughs> okay, um, okay, so I'm sorry, I'm editorializing, but <laughs> so there are actually no rules and regulations for homeschooling. No, they have, like, yeah, absolute freedom. There is no rule at all. So you think the you think the government should regulate how people educate their children? Yes, I do. Why? Because it prevents people from standing on a sidewalk in a community they don't live in when it's thirty degrees outside and annoying the people. So, that but that's exercising the First Amendment right. But that's just just your arbitrary opinion again. You know, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> no, it's just it's just that, what you I think. I will admit that is absolutely my live. opinion. <laughs> Yeah, can I come to Wheaton and just go up to their house and scream in front of their protest house? in front of your house? Well, I'm not in front of anybody's. Well, yeah, that's I guess, my house. You're looking at my oh, house. Oh, okay, yeah. This, well, I don't have a killing facility underneath my oh, you dwelling. Right. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, if there was a killing facility murdering children underneath where I live, then yeah, show up and seek to rescue those kids. Don't man, it doesn't matter what you have underneath your house. We can just show up. And start sure, if you want to. Yeah, that's a lot of. And I. I and I, yeah. and I can preach the gospel to you. Do you have siblings? Yeah. How many? Two. Two brothers. Were you all homeschooled? Yeah. What do your brothers do? Um, one of them is, he works for a recruiting business that helps athletes get recruited by colleges for um, sports. Okay. And my other, other brother is a 